I need you to turn off your laptop, sir. It interferes with our navigational systems. You know, when you guys say that, it sounds pretty ridiculous to most people, right? Sir? Mr. Ziegler? A message was just patched up to the cockpit for you. I'm not sure I've got it right. POTUS in a bicycle accident? You got it right. You can't use your phone until we land, sir. Are you telling me I can still flummox this thing with something I bought at Radio Shack? That's not entirely oh, true. for God's sake, forget about the journey, okay? The voyage is not our problem. What's our problem? What to do when the Nina, the Pinta, and the get me the hell out of here hit Miami. You think the United States is under attack from 1,200 Cubans in rowboats? I'm not saying I don't like our chances. Mind-boggling to me that we ever won an election. What did I tell you before you went on the air yesterday? You said, don't get cute with Mary Marsh. I said, don't get cute with Mary Marsh. In preparation for the Sunday morning radio address on family values. When did that get on the schedule? Listen to me for one second. When did it get on the schedule? The regular Sunday morning. Listen yeah, to me. Yeah, but when did we schedule family happen? values? We scheduled it, Josh, after your smug, taunting, you know, calamitous performance on Capitol Beat. The AAF and Al Caldwell, Mary Marsh, I invited them all for coffee this afternoon, along with a couple of speechwriters, to talk about what they want to hear. Yes, yes, sir. You know, if you listen carefully, you can hear two centuries of presidents rolling over in their Come graves. To the meeting. No! Come to the meeting and be nice. Why? So CJ can put it in the paper. Al Caldwell's friends with bad people. I think he should say so for the common good. Screw politics. How about that? You don't run social policy for this government. How about that? Toby! I'm in charge of the message around here. It's my job to tell the president that the best thing he can do from a PR standpoint is to show you the door. She meant Jewish. When she said, New York sense of humor. She was talking about you and me. I don't like what I've just been accused of. I'm afraid that's just tough, Mrs. Marsh. The first commandment says, honor thy father. No, it doesn't. Toby, it doesn't. listen to... No, I, if I'm gonna make you sit through this preposterous exercise, we're gonna get the names of the damn commandments right. Okay, here we go. Honor thy father is the third commandment. At least slept with a prostitute. Call girl. Accidentally. Yes. I don't understand. Did you trip over something? I didn't know she was a call girl. There wasn't a red flag when she charged you money in exchange for she sex? She didn't charge me, Toby. Come on. You picked up a hooker. Call girl. Well, that's a distinction that's going to be very important to the grand jury. I haven't broken any laws. Who else knows about this? Josh. And who else? That's it. So it's just me, you, the hooker, the president's deputy chief of staff, and the Wall Street Journal. You know what, Toby? She's not a hooker. Hang on a second, Sam. I'd like to call her, just to say that we could be friends. I don't see the danger in that. No, no, Sam, no. You're gonna try and reform her? No. I think you are. What'd he say? He was on the broadcast along with several officers from Cromwell Air Force Base when he said regarding the president being weak on defense. Folks down here are patriotic, fiercely patriotic. The president better not be planning on making any visits to this base. If he does, he may not get out alive. He said that. You believe it? Sitting with military officers. Yeah. Don't take the bait, Josh. Don't take the bait. You better believe I'm going to take the bait. Toby. That'll be a law against it. There is a law against it. Why'd you get him started? How about threatening the life of the president? He's talking to other people. How about conspiracy? They were military officers. How about treason? Toby. That was a member of our own party, Leo. That was a Democrat who said that. It's bad, I know. That's it? Well, what are you going to do? Have the Justice Department bring him in for questioning pending felony charges. Toby's right. What's the good of being in power if you're not going to haul your enemies in for questioning? <laughs> so how do you feel there, big guy? Like I just got screwed with my pants on. Excellent. <laughs> Josh, get me everything. We vetted him two months. We're going to vet him four more days. I want to know every parking ticket. I want to know every girlfriend he stood up for dinner in 1953. Mandy, you're gonna roll this guy out in a show that makes the Queen's coronation look like dinner theater. Sam, you're gonna write the president's introduction. You're also gonna write Harrison's remarks. Harrison's not gonna like that. You show him the robe he gets. I like it fine. CJ, no leaks. If the name of this nominee is leaked out before I want it to be leaked out, I'm gonna blame you and you're gonna find that unpleasant. Hey, there's no way you saw this coming. Toby. Leo, I know I'm in your office, forgive me. But nobody saw this coming. There is a principle here that no, you- No, there's not, not this week. We've been doing this for a year, and all we've gotten is a year older. Our job approval is 48%, and I think that number's soft, and I'm tired of being a field captain for the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Tell me what? I'm supposed to just trust the guy on the phone? Sam. Hey, Miss Lanahan. Is this a joke? You're not going to say hello, Toby? Yes, hello. Is this a joke? No. I don't understand. Toby. I'm in disbelief. What should I say your first reaction was? Disbelief. He's good on education, good on women's rights. Are you shilling for her? I I'm not shilling. I'm just smoothing away. Don't do that. She just asked me to take your temperature. And please don't do that. We're running away from ourselves. And I know we can score points that way. I was a principal architect of that campaign strategy, right along with you, Judge. But we're here now. Tomorrow night, we do an immense thing. 
We have to say what we feel. That government, no matter what its failures in the past and in times to come, for that matter, government can be a place where people come together and where no one gets left behind. No one. Gets left behind. I was raised on Sesame Street. I was raised on Julia Child. I was raised on Brideshead Revisited. The legacies are safe in my hands. Is Toby now? I stepped off the edge of the world. Yes. Where'd this happen? Wesley, Connecticut. Why do you refuse the breathalyzer? Because he's a crazy man who's out to ruin my life. Toby, that's what he's out to do. CJ, Sam sees one reporter when he gets off that plane. I'm gonna blame you. Toby's got you covered there. I'm going with Sam. Toby, Judge and I are gonna have an abrupt conversation. But if you and your colleagues in the Republican Party no. were as invested in solving the problems associated with poverty as you are in scoring political points on the backs of poor people and minorities, you might just see the value. Are you calling me a racist wooden shop back? Of course not. She answered wisely. If the shoe fits, responded the secretary. Well, wasn't that clever of her? Yeah. What's going on? Sam feels we're zeroing in on it. You haven't found it yet? We've been navigating by the North Star, which turned out to be the Delta shuttle from LaGuardia. It's a miracle we're not in Nantucket right now. Toby, how hard can it be to find the Wesley police station? I don't know, Josh, but while we're looking, can you tell me a little more about the president's secret plan to fight inflation? How long before you let up on me on that? Oh, it's gonna take a little while, I would think. Shut up. Gotta call up Toby's office and see if he was watching. Where the hell is he? Never mind. To support me on this. No! Thanks. Toby, have you fallen on your head? Listen. Have you fallen down and hit your head on something hard? I feel really bad about this. You do? Yes. Oh, well, then I guess that's all that really matters. Hey. That was some very good television, Josh, and I think four network news directors will bear me out on that tonight. I really think this isn't as bad as you're making it out to be. To me, Sam, the only thing that can make my day worse is if Roberto Mendoza got involved. It's your lucky night, officers. There isn't going to be a report. There isn't going to be an investigation. No one's getting suspended. And no one's filing a $100 million lawsuit against the county that they would almost surely win. But in this room, you're going to apologize to Mr. Mendoza. And then you're going to get in your squad car, you're going to follow us, and you're going to apologize to his son. This right here? This is why you have a reputation as a pain in the ass. I cultivated that reputation. Could I get you to try harder in there? Sure, because right now I'm not trying at all. I have to say, if there's been an improvement in your attitude, it's been marginal. 51. 51 yay votes is what we see on these screens before a drop of wine is swallowed. Because there's a little thing called what, Bonnie? Tempting fate. Tempting fate is what it's called. In the three months, this man has been on my radar screen. I have aged 48 years. This is my day of jubilee. I will not have it screwed up by what, Bonnie? By tempting fate. By tempting fate? I told him I thought that was ridiculous. What do you think? Are you talking to me during the jackal? I was just... <laughs> Never talk to me during the jackal? Sure. One victory in a year, Leo. Toby. Mendoza. We got Mendoza on the court. This president was elected with 48% of the vote, Toby. Yes, but he was elected. Without a mandate. The majority of people in the country voted for somebody else. I don't care, Leo. He was elected. He was sworn in. I was standing 10 feet from the Chief Justice. I'm saying it's not the easiest circumstance under Who the which... So one gonna victory in a year is One so victory bad. in a year stinks in the life of an administration. But it's not the ones we lose that bother me, Leo. It's the ones we don't suit up for. And I'm not too crazy about you questioning my loyalty just then. What did I say? I said, get your ass over here. I've drafted a letter of resignation. Well, you're not going to give it to him, Sam, because that would deny me the pleasure of throwing you out through a plate glass window. You have every right to say that. Well, thank you for acknowledging that right. Toby, just keep you on a leash, you know that? Leo, I'm talking to CJ, then I'm talking to you. Ten-foot chain around your neck. I bolt you to your desk. I have someone come in and feed you. Toby, are you in here sticking up for Sam? I know. It's strange, sir. But I'm feeling a, a certain... Big brotherly connection right now. You know, obviously, I'd like that feeling to go away as soon as possible. But for the moment, I think there's no danger in the White House standing by Sam and aggressively going after the people who set him up. Toby? I serve at the pleasure of the president.